we're gonna go through the basics of photo editing, what you can do when editing your photos and kind of a few different levels that you can kind of go to when editing your photos. We're gonna use Adobe Lightroom Classic because it's a very, very popular choice. It also kind of transfers very well to other programs like Capture One, Photoshop, whatever it is you might want to use. A lot of the kind of things we're gonna be looking at here are gonna be very, very similar across all of those different programs. Now we're gonna be looking at primarily global edits versus local edits. So global edits are edits that affect the entire photo. So for example, contrast, exposure, highlight, shadows, things like that. They're gonna affect the whole photo rather than local edits, which we might do with something like a graduated filter, a radial filter, an adjustment brush, where we're just affecting one part of the photo. We'll look at that in a future video, maybe even next week. But this week we are going to look specifically at the global edits of the photo. And like I say, the different levels you can kind of get to when editing your photo. So let's dive into Lightroom Classic right now. I've actually got the same folder that we've been using recently. We're gonna actually go ahead and edit some of these photos to actually show you exactly what kind of level we can get to with these. Now, when I talk about different levels, Essentially, when you're editing a photo, you are obviously finishing off the photo from when you took it. And there's different points that you can get to. Obviously, you can just leave it very natural. So if you shoot in RAW, which we've talked about in previous videos, there's a lot that you can do with the photo, but you can also do a very minimal amount just to bring it back to kind of a very natural look. So that's generally adding a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation. So let's take this photo here, for example. This is obviously taken at sunset. We can just add a little bit of contrast and maybe a touch of saturation as well. That's gonna take it much closer to what it would have looked like as a JPEG straight out of camera. You know, raw tends to be a little bit flatter, so we might even just bump the contrast up a little bit more and maybe even the saturation, or we could use the vibrance as well. We're gonna get into that in a moment. And that's gonna take it pretty much back to what it would have been like out of camera. So you've always got that option. And for me, that's kind of level one of what we could do with photo editing. Just bringing it back to what it would look like as a JPEG straight out of camera. Now, when you're editing a photo, probably one of the biggest things to think about is what is the end result you're trying to go for? How does it affect either the story of the photo or the feel of the photo? What are you trying to actually get out of it? What, what are you trying to evoke from it? And there's lots of perfectly fine answers. In fact, there's no wrong answer when it comes to photo editing. You know, even if you're just trying to emulate a look that you've seen and you like on Instagram, that's absolutely fine. But if you know what you're kind of aiming for, then you know what you're gonna be wanting to do with the editing. It's gonna inform what you're doing. And I think that's really, really helpful. So let's reset this one. So let's look at some of the options we've got here. So for global editing, of course, we've got our kind of exposure and the, the kind of look of the photo in that sense. So exposure, contrast, highlights, obviously are gonna affect the highlights of the photo. So we can bring them down and often with a raw photo, especially something like this sunset where we've got a darker foreground and a, a brighter sky, that's gonna be very handy. Shadows, we could then bring them up a little bit. It's kind of even out that photo. Now it does make it a little bit flatter. We can also add a bit of contrast there. That already looks, you know, really nice. We've got whites and blacks, which work a little bit like highlights and shadows. But for example, if we bring the whites up, you can see it's gonna bring that sky up because that's the brighter part, but we can also bring those down again. Same with the blacks, we could bring that down to kind of darken that foreground or bring it up to kind of fade it out a little bit. We can double click any of these to reset them as well, which is really handy. Then we've got things like the look without necessarily affecting the actual exposure and the brightness. So texture is obviously gonna add or reduce the amount of fine detail we have there. Same with clarity, that kind of adds micro contrast to things. So maybe around edges, it's not the same as sharpness, but it's not a million miles away from sharpness either. It does kind of affect things, it'll bring out little details and it'll sometimes brighten areas as well. It's something you might wanna play around with a little bit, but the general rule of thumb is you probably don't wanna go too crazy with things like texture and, and clarity, same with sharpness, because it is going to massively change the look of the photo. Same with dehaze, you know, if we bring that up a bit, we're gonna get more detail out of the sky, but we are gonna introduce, you know, as we go up further, some pretty crazy looking stuff. So. We wanna leave those alone a little bit. Then we've got vibrance and saturation. Now you might be thinking, what's the difference between these two things? Saturation is going to just saturate every color that we've got here. Whereas vibrance, vibrance is gonna do it in a more kind of intelligent way. So even if we bring vibrance all the way up, you can see it's nothing like when we bring saturation all the way up. Vibrance is gonna increase the colors gradually in a soft kind of way 
and also kind of increase colors that maybe we would want to saturate more rather than just across the board. So it's a much more intelligent way of actually bringing up some of the color in the photo. So I often, in fact, pretty much always use vibrance over saturation when I want to boost the color in the photo. Now we haven't done anything major to this photo. We've done a bit of highlights, a bit of shadows, and a bit of contrast. Usually where I'd start when I'm editing a photo, especially a raw photo like this. But with the white balance, there's a lot we can do. Now, of course, your camera, if you're shooting auto white balance, it's going to do its best to select the white balance it thinks is appropriate. And here, obviously, it's sunset. So we've got a few different options for how we want to proceed. So we can bring that down towards the cooler tones. And you can see that's really going to change the look and feel of this photo. It looks a lot less like sunset, a lot more like more the middle of the day. But if we double click that back to where it was, we can bring it towards the kind of warmer tones and make this a much more golden tone sunset kind of feel. If we introduce that with a little bit of magenta, it starts to feel very sunsetty. Or of course, we can bring in a bit of green as well, if you'd prefer. I think the tint probably is about right, but we can do all kinds of things. If I go over to another photo here, let's say this photo that I've just taken of, of, uh, of the water coming in. Now this is actually a perfect example of some bad photography habits. This is actually a JPEG photo, completely by accident. I just forgot to double check. And when I got home, I realized they're all JPEGs. But even so, we can adjust the color temperature. We can introduce some more warm tones. You can see how that changes the feel of the photo. Or of course, we can make it cooler. Same with, let's say this photo here, we could really warm this up because this was taken at sunset. And that almost makes it kind of a black and white gray kind of feel. Or we can really play into that blue feel and really kind of cool those tones down and get a real cool feel. So while white balance absolutely can be used to properly and realistically get the feel of the photo, you know, you can absolutely go for whatever is the most natural look. It's also a great way of adding a little bit of, of a color, of a feel to a photo. You know, a sunset, maybe you do want to warm that up because it just brings out those, those tones. If we bring the highlights down here, maybe bring the shadows up a little bit, maybe bring the overall exposure down because it's a raw photo. We can play around with it like that. Look at how different that now looks. Now with Lightroom, we can press the backslash key to see before and after, or we can press the Y key to see a side by side of the before and after. So you can see with an extremely small amount of editing, just white balance, highlights, and shadows, look how much of a difference we've made to just this photo. So that's a really interesting and important thing with white balance is this is absolutely a tool for yes, natural looking photos and getting the correct white balance or correct. I don't think there's a, actually a, a correct white balance if you like, it's just whatever you think looks good. Or you can use it to actually warm or cool your photo. Now, if we do the opposite here, if we bring this down into the blues, we can make this a much kind of cooler photo in terms of the actual color. Not that it's, you know, not cool, but you get it. And I think, you know, it makes a big difference to the actual vibe of the photo. So that's kind of level two for me is, is actually adjusting the white balance for the feel of the photo. So either to get it to where it was in your mind's eye and it just didn't look kind of good enough when you take the photo, the, the white balance just doesn't feel warm enough, or to make it kind of how you felt it was at the time. So this photo, for example, I was obviously there, I took the photo. I remember it as being much warmer kind of tones, much more golden hour kind of feel to things than this photo suggests. So I would warm this up because that, that is probably more how I remember it being than it actually appears in the photo. So I would warm this up to get that sunset feel back into the photo. Now level three, kind of stepping this up even further with editing, of course, we can do our global edits. So we can do our highlights, our shadows, our contrast, maybe a bit of texture, a bit of clarity, very nice. But then we can move on to a little bit of color grading as well. So let's pick out a photo here. Let's go for something like this one. Now, first of all, the first thing I would need to do with this photo is just straighten it up. So I can come up here to the crop overlay. Now, of course, this is in Lightroom Classic, but there's absolutely any crop overlay tool in any of these photo editing pieces of software are gonna allow you to just straighten things like, like so. So let's, let's just sort that out. That's about right. Let's click done. And then, you know, we can make our kind of basic edit. So let's bring the highlights down a little bit. Let's bring those shadows up. Let's add a little bit of contrast. Let's actually just boost the exposure a little bit as well and bring the highlights down. 
Let's warm it up because I remember this being a little bit warmer than it appears in this photo. A bit of texture, a bit of clarity. And then we can start with some color grading. Now, in Lightroom Classic, I really enjoy color grading in because there's lots of different ways we can do it. Obviously the white balance is one, but one tool which is very useful is the hue, saturation, and luminance kind of sliders or HSL for short. We've got the ability to change the actual colors. So for example, orange, we can make a, a richer orange or move it more towards yellow. Same with all the other colors, yellow, we can make kind of more towards orange, green, more towards yellow. And a combination of these different things is gonna really affect the photo. So for example, you can see as I was doing that, the seaweed here was really changing color. So let's have a look at how we could make a feel for this photo. So let's make the oranges kind of uh, more towards kind of a burnt or red orange. Let's bring the yellows down as well. And then the greens, let's bring the blues towards the kind of aqua side. So we're going for kind of an orange and teal kind of feel here. We can come into saturation. Let's just bring the oranges, let's bring them down a bit. I don't think they necessarily need to be in there, but yellows, greens, let's, let's bring down the greens a little bit. And then the blues, let's bring them up a touch as well. Maybe we'll just bring the oranges back up a little bit. And maybe I'll move the yellows back towards the oranges just a touch as well. Now we could play around with the luminance as well. For example, the yellows we could make much brighter, we can make much darker, but you can see if we go too crazy on that, it's gonna really, really affect that photo. So let's, let's just go a touch with those, making them a little bit darker because of this sky. And then we can come down to the calibration tool right at the bottom. So we skipped a few, don't worry, we can come back to them. And we can just change some of these. So the red primary, for example, let's make red a little bit more towards orange and blue a little bit more towards sort of teal. And look at this now, look at the style we've gone for here, which is a massively orange and teal kind of look. Now, I don't know if I love it on this photo, but it's important that we can actually do this kind of stuff. Let's press the backslash key to see before and then after. So we've really changed the feel of that photo. Again, I don't know if I love it, to be honest, but it's quite a powerful thing we can do. Let's look at some of the other tools we've got here. So I've got this photo here, for example. Now, again, Unfortunately, this is part of the same set where it was JPEG, but I really, really like it. You know, I just happened to see this couple in the distance, silhouetted, I just moved so they were perfectly in line with the sun, and I love it, to be honest, I really love it. It's just one of those moments where you just happen to be there, right time, and you just nail the photo. I mean, I didn't nail it, it's not even straight, but I only had a second before they started walking away. So I got the photo, I can straighten it up now. Let's put a crop on this. Let's put it to four by five. Let's just straighten that up a little bit. And let's actually crop in a little bit as well. Let's, uh, let's go to about, to about there. I wanna center them up and have the sun. Lovely. Now there's a few things we can do with this. This is obviously a JPEG, so it's not as flat as a raw image would be. Otherwise I'd probably play around with the contrast. I actually think this is pretty nicely contrasty, but let's bring the highlights down a touch. Not as much as maybe I would. Firstly, because I don't think it needs to be, but also because it's JPEG, I don't have as much room to play around. If I bring them down too much, the sky starts to feel a little bit strange. So let's just bring them down a touch. I'm gonna to bring the shadows up a touch as well and just pop a tiny bit of contrast in there. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of clarity, maybe a bit of texture as well, and the vibrance up, just a touch, nothing too much. Just kind of the standard kind of stuff I would normally play around with. And then I might come back and change it up as well. There are actually a couple of other ways we can color grade as well. So obviously we've used the HSL sliders but we can add colors into the midtones, the shadows and the highlights, actually add color in. So in this panel here, color grading right underneath the HSL sliders, we can add color in. So let's go ahead and add some, some orange into the midtone. So we just click and drag this circle over to the oranges. The further out we drag it, the more saturated it's gonna be. We don't wanna go too mad. We don't need to, I don't think. There's a lot of color already here. Let's bring this one in the highlights over the orange as well. And then a bit of light blue or teal into the shadows, I think, is gonna look pretty good. So we've done that there, and I think that looks great. Now you can turn on or off any of these little panels, so you can see what difference they've specifically made, rather than seeing the whole photo before and after. So let's come up here, where it says color grading, we can just toggle that off and on. Now it's a very subtle effect that we could then go and increase if we wanted to, but I don't think we need to, to be honest. I think it looks fine. And I think it actually is making enough of a difference that I really like it. Now, what I want to do with this particular photo is really isolate them as the subject. It's them, it's the sun, it's all about them. You know, everything else around them is just context. 
So there's a few ways we can do that. Now we can obviously do that with a local adjustment. So obviously we've been talking all about global adjustments where we're affecting the whole photo. We could use a radial filter, for example, to darken everything around them. That would be one way of doing it. But if we scroll down here, we can actually come to effects. We've got post-crop vignetting. And we can actually bring that down and pop a reasonably heavy vignette on the photo, which I think looks fantastic. I think it really helps with kind of making the photo all about them rather than any of the surrounding areas. Now, just to show you as a kind of glimpse of what we can do with some of the filters in Lightroom Classic, we can come up here to these areas up here and we'll go into these in more detail in another video. We can click radial filter here, drag it over them and then move it kind of to, to there. And we can affect everything around them. So we've now got this new panel opened up as part of the mask. And what we've done is masked out where they are. So we're now gonna be affecting everything around them. So if we press O, you can see in red, all the areas we're going to affect. And we could just bring the exposure down and really focus it in on them. Let's click done. And look how much that really makes it all about them. Let's press the backslash key to see before and after. I think that was really nice. Let's get rid of that for this photo though, because we're just looking at global adjustments. So that was just to show you how that would work. But for now, we're gonna leave it as is. Let's go back to the calibration panel right down the bottom. This again allows us like we did before to do a bit of color grading. So we can make the reds more of an orange and the blues more of a teal. That's gonna give us more of a kind of orange and teal feel to the photo before and after. I think it looks really nice. And then we've just got a couple of different areas that we haven't explored. Now sharpening, I don't think this really needs sharpening at all, but you can add sharpening to things if you want. I think that can be dangerous only because you can over sharpen things and make them look awful. You can add noise that way. There is noise reduction as well. This photo doesn't need it, but if we had a lot of noise, we could bring that luminance up to kind of soften that out. There's a bit of micro blur applied to remove the noise, but again, you don't want to go too mad with that, especially if you don't have to, because it's going to kind of bring the sharpness down, bring the detail down with that micro blur as well. So it's kind of a, a way to deal with a bad situation if you need to, but ideally you don't get yourself into the bad situation to begin with. So you, you expose in a way where you don't have to use super high ISO or anything like that. And that essentially is the basics of photo editing, the Lightroom. I would say that this more of a color graded feel it's probably the next level up from where we were before. We've actually gone in and added color to the midterns, the shadows, the highlights. You know, we've played around with the white balance as well. And of course the exposure part of it as well. So level one, we've got just bringing it back to what you would expect out of camera. Level two, just bringing it back to what you feel you saw with your eyes or how you felt when you were there. And then level three, we're actually applying a style, you know, a color grade to the photo, which you know, isn't gonna be how it looked at the time, but artistically is how you want the finished photo to appear. And then we can go on from there. We could add clouds in Photoshop. We can add birds. You know, that's probably another level where that's where I think you're starting to blur the line between photo editing and maybe graphic design. I love doing that. Hands, hands up, cars on the table. I love doing that, absolutely. But that is for a lot of people too much. And I totally understand that. I totally understand that that is, again, where you start to blur between photo editing and actually graphic design and creating art rather than a photo. So we'll leave it there for now. I think that's the basics of Lightroom kind of covered. We can go into all kinds of detail about various things. We didn't touch on the tone curve at all, really, but that is another way of affecting things like exposure, but you can also do color grading as well. We do actually have a full video just about the tone curve because it is incredibly powerful and really you could just edit a photo with the tone curve. So I haven't got into it here because I think it's, it's a little bit more advanced in my mind than some of these other sliders, but hopefully that gives you an overview of the basics of Lightroom. Of course, we've got a video all about getting started with Lightroom, setting it up, getting your folders in there, everything like that. I'll link to that in the description so you can check that out as well. So hopefully these work as a kind of two-parter, but what would you like to see? What would you like to see about Lightroom, about photo editing? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to make what you actually wanna see. Of course, full list of kit used for this video and photos and all that kind of fun stuff in the description. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.